which is very important and I hope that you remember this and apply to all your teachings so that people always hear about God's grace motivated by God's grace to serve God and to love God and have a close relationship with God now uh, I show here the difference between motivation by law and motivation by grace uh, a lot of people use the law to motivate people for instance they will say uh, you didn't read the Bible you have to read the Bible you have to do this you have to do that you didn't do this right uh, so uh, people are used to this kind of communication a lot of times uh, for instance when people grow up a lot of time the parents talk to them like that the parents would say you have to obey me if not I'll beat you up and uh, so it, uh, it, it and many people grow up in that kind of mentality and then when they become a Christian they are first uh, impressed with the love of God the grace of God uh, the unconditional love of God and then they they appreciate God for the forgiveness and uh, and the uh, uh, presence of the Holy Spirit the love of God but then soon they start to say I have to do this I have to do that now I, I say we all sh have to and should obey God but the motivation is not from the law and here I show you the difference between motivation by the law and by grace when people are motivated by the law that means they say I have to do this I have to do that when they are motivated by the grace of God they are saying God loves me so much and I am so blessed I want other people blessed and then whenever I obey God and bless other people God is very happy and he will bless me too so I'm happy to follow God and obey God and serve God uh, and then uh, also because we we enjoy the presence of God we say I enjoy his presence I enjoy, I enjoy God I enjoy serving God that's the motivation by the grace of God now uh, even pastors a lot of times are motivated by the law they say I have to uh, help this church to grow I have to work hard I have to do my best to help this church to grow and uh, and what happened is uh, then if the church is not growing well or even when it's growing well they would put pressure on themselves and say I have to help the church grow more and uh, or, or they will say I didn't work hard enough I have to work harder and so that is motivation by the law they always say I have to do this I have to do that and what happened is then they will have guilt because they will say I'm not uh, doing well enough I'm not uh, uh, I should do better and I'm not doing well enough but then motivated by grace people will be filled with forgiveness they say yes I'm I'm uh, forgiven by God I'm happy to serve God and and God forgives me and and God is happy with whatever I do for him and then motivated by the law people are under pressure they have to do this do that now I use an illustration comparison with marriage some people they get married uh, they could be motivated by the law what what does that mean it means that people say oh I have to I have to help my wife I have to do this do that at home if not my wife would be unhappy uh, if not there'll be problems in the family then it's always saying I have to do this I have to do that but if they're motivated by the grace of uh, you know the love of the family then what they do is they was they would uh, they would say well my love my wife loves me so much my children loves me so much they're precious to me and I enjoy their presence and I'm happy to love them I'm happy to be with them I use an illustration comparing with someone who is uh, you know they get uh, someone uh, who is falling in love when they fall in love they they have the motivation to do everything for the for the uh, girlfriend or boyfriend because they they are in love they are motivated to bless the other person but sometimes when after marriage they say there's so much to do I cannot do well and my spouse blames me and that way they are motivated by the law as soon as they are under blaming accusation then they are under the law but if they are living uh, with love they know that the spouse 
is loving them, and then they, they will be naturally motivated to, to love the spouse and children. Now, with God, He's always loved us. But many people always think of the accusation of God. Now, when, when we do wrong, when we have committed sins, what we do is we just confess our sins and ask God to forgive us, and then He will forgive us. And He will forgive us, for sure. So with God, there is no continual accusation if we confess our sins and ask God to forgive us. So with God, there is no continual condemnation. But with the family, sometimes uh, when there is a conflict between a husband and wife, then there is uh, conflict and accusation. And when there is accusation, then they are living under the law. They are under pressure to build up the marriage. And a lot of times it becomes very difficult. No matter what they do, it still seems that the spouse is not happy. So, uh, so that's a, a comparison with marriage. Now with God, because many people misunderstand God and think that God is accusing them and God is looking at all the bad things they've done and then they will say, uh, I, I'm not a good Christian. I, I'm not pleasing God uh, enough. I, I'm, uh, you know, I'm a person, I'm a weak Christian. And then that way, they are under pressure. But if we say, God forgives me, God loves me. Whatever I do for God, God is very happy. Whenever I come close to God, God is very happy. When I do it sincerely, God is very happy. Then they are filled with forgiveness and they have no pressure because they know that anything they do for God, God is very happy. Whenever they repent, God is very happy. Whenever they trust in God, God is very happy. Okay, and then motivated by the law, people have a sense of failure. They say, I'm not doing well enough. Sometimes they accuse themselves, they accuse other people, so it's always accusation. But in motivated by grace, people have a sense of accomplishment. They say, whatever I do for God, even when I give a cup, a cup of cold water to a little one, God will remember that and He will reward me. Then He has a sense of accomplishment. What I do for God, God is very happy. And when people are motivated by the law, they like to compare. They like to say, I, uh, I do better than you, or he does better than me, and then they feel unhappy because they're not doing well enough. So uh, then they are comparing with each other, and then there is pressure. But then when people are motivated by grace, they will praise other people. I thank God you're growing. I thank God that your church is growing. I'm happy to see the church is growing because when you, your church is growing, God is happy and I'm happy. I'm happy that I can do anything for you. That is motivated by the grace of God. But many, even many pastors, sometimes are motivated by the law. They say, I have to have a bigger church than his church. I have to make the church grow faster. Then they are under pressure to help the church to grow. Uh, and then, uh, motivated by law, people want to compete and to be better than other people. But when they are motivated by the, by the grace of God, they want to help other people. They, they are motivated to help other people. When they do things to help other people, God is very help, happy with them. And then, motivated by the law, people will be critical of themselves and others. But when we are motivated by grace, then we see the goodness of ourselves and other people. We we'll say, I'm happy that I'm growing. It's God's work. I thank God. God is helping me to grow. And they are seeing the good, goodness of other people. Other people are growing. I'm very happy to see that other people are growing. And I thank God for them. So it's a very big difference. And you think of uh, the comparison will be like this. You think of when, uh, when you have a, a family that the couple are in in love, that when they are in love with each other, then they are motivated by grace to love each other. But when, uh, when the spouse always accuses and says, you didn't do this, you didn't do that, you didn't listen to me, and then they will be motivated by the law, and then they are under pressure. And uh, the same thing with, with God. Some people, they are always saying, I didn't do well enough, I have to do better, I have to help the church grow more, I have to be better than the other church. Then they are under the law. But if they say, whatever I do uh, to come to God, when I pray to God, God is very happy. When I repent, God is very happy. When I uh, love Him, He is very happy. 
to bless me and when I serve him when even when I do a little thing he's very happy that way he's motivated to do more for God so I hope we all uh, will be motivated by the grace of God to serve him willingly okay now God's law tell us what to do now we, sh we should obey the law and we have to obey the law I'm not saying when we live under the grace, we don't obey the law. We do obey the law. So God's law tells us what to do. And God's grace tells us what God has done to bless us. That Jesus has died for us. The Holy Spirit moves in our heart. The Holy Spirit gives us motivation and power. And God appreciates what we do. And He will, he will bless us and He will reward us. All this is grace of God. And uh, He will give us spiritual gifts and God's law tell us God's judgment and punishment too now this is true too we, sh we should warn ourselves that we, if we disobey God there will be consequences but as mature Christian we should be motivated by the grace of God God loves me so much I am willing to serve him and God is very happy with anything I do for him that is motivated motivation by, by the grace of God and now, the law does give us some motivation is usually accusation or reminding us what to do. The main motivation should come from the grace of God. If people are motivated by God's law, then they say, I have to do evangelism, I have to do this. And then if I don't do it, God will punish me. So that's motivation by the law. Now we obey the law, but motivated by the grace of God. That is the ideal situation motivated by the grace of God and touched by the grace of God and be changed by the love of God to obey the law okay and then uh, God's law motivate us by punishment the God's law will tell us if you don't do this you'll be punished so so the motivation of the law is by punishment and by reminding us telling us what to do and God's grace motivate us by grace and love it's like uh, you know, think of a loving father with a child. Then the loving father says, uh, uh, "You do the homework. You do uh, help with the family. I'm very happy, and I, I'm happy to see you growing." So that is when a child sees that the father is happy, then he is willing. He's he would uh, do things at home willingly. That is motivated by the love of his father. Okay, and the God's law should not be the main motivation, but it's a, uh, uh, a motivation of reminder and motivation of, of uh, uh, punishment if we do, don't obey. So there is a, we still, uh, have, we still have a, a little motivation by the law, even for a mature Christian. For a mature Christian, he will say, God loves me so much, I am happy to serve Him, I am happy to do anything for Him. But he still has a little reminder behind uh, that tells him, if I don't obey, I, you know, I can face uh, the, uh, the judgment of God. And, uh, but for mature Christian, that should not be a major motivation. It should be just a little reminder. Okay, and God's grace should be the main motivation. So it's very important to understand the difference between the two. Now, I have heard many, many messages. I have been to many churches. I heard many messages. I found that many people use the law mainly to tell people what to do and you have to do this. Instead of telling them God's grace, God is happy with you, God forgives you, and God uh, loves you, and God lifts you up to a high level, and whatever you do for God, God is very happy. So that is motivation. Um, that's motivation by the uh, by the love of God. Okay, and then now, how can we uh, how can we have this motivation from the grace of God? That we start with filled with appreciation of God's nature that we we thank God for um, let me see here what's happening here okay okay um, 
Now, how can we be motivated by the grace of God? First, we want to be filled with the appreciation of God's nature. How can we see God's love more? We see God's love more uh, when we appreciate God's creation. Second Peter 1.4, by which uh, have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through this you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Oh, uh, here I mean, uh, I'm sorry, here is, what I mean is, God's beautiful nature, His love, His kindness, so when we are motivated by God's grace, we want to see God's nature, His beautiful nature, and His divine nature, partakers of the divine nature, that we want to partake of, take part in the divine nature of God. And here it shows the divine nature of God. First, God's love, care, and acceptance. God loves us very much. He cares about us, and He accepts us more than anyone accepts us. He accepts us greatly. Now, for many people, when they see other people sin, they, they, then they don't accept them. But for God, even when we sin, when the Holy Spirit moves in our heart, He comes with acceptance to move us to repentance. God doesn't, you know, condemn us and then push us away from Him. God draws us with His love. So that's His acceptance. It's very beautiful. And for people, it's very hard to find real acceptance, even when we fail. But with God, we have failed Him so many times, but still God accepts us when we have failed Him so many times. And then God's holiness and justice. So He is very holy and He is very just. He, he has no sin at all. He is, God is light, so this is His beautiful nature. And God's holiness is very beautiful because in heaven there is no more sin, it's always, uh, in, in heaven, it's always beautiful, uh, everyone is uh, kind to each other, everyone help each, each other, uh, that is the holiness of God in heaven, everyone is holy and loving. And then three, God appreciates and lifts up people, so God appreciates when we come to Him, and He raises us up to a high level, He lifts up our life to a high level. So that's his nature. Now God has much more, many more natures than this, but here is showing some of it. And God's wisdom, power, and plan. He has a, he has great wisdom in creating our brain, our body, the universe. He has great power, and he has a wonderful plan. And God works in all things for our good. Everything he does, everything for our good. So God's nature is very beautiful. He has a wonderful nature. So here it talks about uh, His love and he, His care for us. Matthew 9, 22, here it talks about a woman with 12 years bleeding. And Jesus turned around because this woman touched Him. And then Jesus said, Who touched me? And the woman didn't say anything. And then Jesus said, Someone must have touched me because I perceive power coming out from me. And then the woman admitted, admitted that she touched Jesus. And then, instead of accusing her, because she has broken the law, she's unclean, she should not touch anyone. Instead of accusing her, Jesus said this. Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, Be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. So Jesus said, Be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. So Jesus is really has great love. He said, be of good cheer. He knows that the, uh, the woman has fear, has worry, has guilt feeling because she has touched Jesus and all the people around her. And Jesus cared about her feeling and so, said, so he said, be of good cheer, don't worry, be happy, uh, put down burdens. So he cares about her feeling. And then he called her daughter, and the woman may be very impressed because why did Jesus call me daughter? That is a very intimate relationship, and that's how God is. He, he wants to have an intimate relationship with us. He, he accepts us as children. So God, calling, God is calling us here right now 
my child, my son, my daughter, I'm happy with you. I'm happy that you come to me. Your faith has made you well. Faith means that you we just trust in God. We just believe in Him. So it's by free gift. We don't do anything to deserve it. We just trust in Jesus and then we receive the great gift of healing. So here it shows that Jesus cares about us and He accepts us. So that's the wonderful thing about, about Jesus. And God is with us and is blessing us. God is with us all the time. Psalm 139 verse 5, You are all around me, in front of and in back, and you lay your hand upon me. The you here is God. That you are around me. You are in front of me and in, in my back, and you lay your hand upon me. So God is with us all the time, and He lays His hand upon us. So, so God is with us all the time. He cares about us, and He, he wants to bless us. And God always remembers us. Isaiah 49, 15, Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. So here uh, Isaiah, uh, God says, Can a woman forget her nursing child? Uh, would a mother forget the child that she, was, that she is nursing? By no means, she will not forget the baby. Uh, for any mother here, have you forgotten your baby when you went out to shopping? Did you leave your baby somewhere? Did you leave your baby in a bus? Uh, you might have left your umbrella somewhere, but you would not forget your child. So here it says that even when a mother may forget the child, I will not forget you. So let's internalize this message that God is thinking of us right now. God is blessing us right now. He's thinking about us with love. He wants to bless us. He wants us to feel loved, that He is thinking about us at this point, at this time. He is with us right now. He is thinking of us right now and have compassion, and, and He has compassion on us. Sephaniah 3.17 He will take great great delight in you. He will quiet you with His love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Now here it talks about that God has feeling toward us. Now many people didn't know that. God has great feeling toward us. He, he takes great delight in us. He's happy with us. And He quiets us with His love. He will, he will soothe us, make us calm with His love. He, when His love comes, it makes people feel calm and peaceful. And He will rejoice over you with singing. He will rejoice over us. He will be very happy with singing. He is singing over us. So God is very uh, happy with us. God is very excited with us. So I hope we, we believe these promises of God. Now many people read this and they say, No, no, no. God doesn't love me that much. But God promised that. And whatever God promised, He, he make it come true. He promised the prophecies of the world, what happens in the world, and it all came true. The prophecies of Jesus, it all came true. And so, when He promises anything, it will come true also. So we know that He's really happy with us when we trust in Him, when we have a living relationship with Him. And so every day we can say, God is loving me, God is blessing me. Now this will motivate us with the grace of God. I hope we all live like that. Let me tell you, every day, many times, I would say, declare to God's, God's love for me. I would say, God is loving me right now. God is blessing me right now. God is with me right now. God is laying His hand upon me now. So I will be always thinking about God's grace upon me all the time, and I, believing that God is really loving me. And God gave us His Son and everything with His Son. Romans 5, 8, 32, He who did not spare His own Son, but gave Him up for us all, will He not also, along with Him, graciously give us all things? So, God did not spare His own Son, but gave Him up for us all. He gave His Son to die for us, along with Him. So, He will also, along with Jesus, graciously give us all things. But many people say, I don't have all things. 
the more we seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness, the more He will bless us. So I hope we realize that a lot of times, a lot of Christians, they don't have uh, many blessings from God because they're not seeking God's kingdom. They're not loving God. They're not obeying God. And the sins will block the blessings of God. But when we have the sincere heart, even when we're not perfect, when we always say, God, I want to love you more. I want to, I want to please you. I want to do things to please you. I want to bless other people. Even when they are not doing so well, when they have this motivation, I want to glorify God. I want to uh, uh, do what pleases the Lord then God is happy with them and God will give us more and more blessings. For instance, many families have fights because they did not let God take over their life and so they have fights and yelling. But if they believe in God's love, then they will have, you know, they say, God is loving me and uh, I can be peaceful with my spouse even when my spouse is not doing things right always, but I can uh, I can appreciate what he has done and then I can uh, make him happy and then he will be motivated to do uh, more things uh, to that our relationship can be built up. Now many people push people to do things by the law. You didn't talk to me, you didn't listen to me, you didn't help me. And this doesn't make the other person willing to, to bless, uh, to be nice to him. This actually gives people pressure. But if we say, I'm happy to be with you. I, I'm happy that you do this for me. I'm happy that, uh, that we have a good relationship. This will motivate the spouse to do good things to him. Okay, so I give a definition of faith. 2 Timothy 2.13 If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. So even when we are faithless, God is still faithful. Even when we don't have faith, God is still faithful. And, and so, trusting in God, faith in God is believing that He is faithful. Believing that He will keep His promises. So, I put here my definition of faith. What He promised, I believe. I believe His promise. When He works, I believe. When He works through things, I believe that He is, he is doing the perfect thing. He is, he is blessing me. He is doing the the good things to bless me and faith is trusting in God's goodness and his work so that's my definition G faith is trusting in his goodness God is good God is nice to me and to everyone who trusts in him and I trust in his work his work is wonderful so this is faith but many people think that faith is like this I have to believe very hard believe very hard and the miracles will come but actually, they can do it a very simple way. I believe God wants to perform miracles. I believe He wants to bless people. So I just pray, Lord, you want to bless this person. You want to heal this person. Lord, we come to you. So when we come to God for healing, we don't have to say, we have to believe, we have to believe. Now, if you have a very good relationship with your spouse, and your spouse uh, is always punctual when he comes to you, when he's not punctual one day, we'll, we'll say, well, there must be something wrong uh, on the way uh, that stop him coming punctually. And then uh, we believe that he's trying to come. He's, he's, uh, he's coming now. And that is faith. Faith in a spouse that he's punctual. So it's the same with God, that I know that God will keep his promise. God will do things according to his promise and he will do things to bless me so I can follow him and trust in him. And many people think that God is not always nice. They think that God will keep the good things from them. So they always say, uh, I, uh, you know, God keeps the good things from me and so I don't have all the good things from God. So that's, uh, some people, they, they misunderstand God. Okay, so we should be motivated by God's grace to obey Him. We should be motivated by His grace to obey Him. That, uh, and motivation by the law gives us pressure and fear. So if people just say, I have to do evangelism. It's, it's, I have to do, I didn't do it enough. Then it's pressure and fear that they have not done well. And living in God's grace does not mean we can sin freely. We don't sin freely. We know that 
Sin is bad. Sin breaks the relationship with God, and God is holy. So I don't want to sin to break the relationship with God. And motivation by God's grace to obey God gives us freedom and a fruitful life. Uh, if we are motivated by God's grace, then we say, God is loving me, God is blessing me. Whenever I do anything to please Him, He's very happy. And so then we are free. I'm happy to do anything for God and God is happy with me. Then we are free and we have a more fruitful life. And people will be attracted by people who are full of the grace of God, full of the love of God. So the picture here is the loving relationship with God it will give us uh, joy uh, and give us good relationship with people and give us ministry to serve God. Okay, and then this next point, it is not hard to please God, although it is impossible to be perfect. We cannot be perfect, but it's not hard to please God. When we repent, the whole heaven rejoices. Luke 15, 7. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. That now in heaven, there is more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents. So when one sinner repents in heaven, the whole heaven will rejoice than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. Now here Jesus is talking about the people who think they don't need repentance. He was talking to the Pharisees who think that they are perfect. And God is telling, Jesus is telling him, telling them that when someone admits his sins, and then he repents. The whole heaven will rejoice over him. And over 99 who says that they don't need uh, repentance. So here, we know that God is happy with anything we do. When we repent, the whole heaven will rejoice. But many people, when they sin, many Christians, when they sin, they say, Oh, God doesn't like me now. God is angry with me now. He's unhappy with me now. And then they would just say, I dare not come to God because I have sinned too much. But instead, we should do this. Instead, we should, we should um, say, uh, when I repent, God is very happy. So I'm happy to come to Him with repentance. Uh, in, in the past, sometimes when I sin, I dare not pray to God. So I understand some people's feeling when they dare not pray to God. But now when I've sinned, immediately I will say, God, please forgive me. Please wash me clean. And I know that God is happy with me. And I don't want to sin anymore. I, I try to stop the sins as soon as the sinful thought comes. But even when I sin, I will say, Lord, please forgive me. And I know that God is happy that I repent. So I have the confidence. Whatever I do for Him, whatever, whatever, whatever I repent, He is very happy. So it's not hard to please God, even though we are not perfect yet. And it's not hard to be close to God. James 4, 8, Come near to God, and He will come near to you. And John 15, 4, Remain in me, as I also remain in you. So when we come near to God, He will always come near to us. He will never say no to us. He will never leave us alone. But some people say, I don't feel God's presence today. Now that could come from themselves because they have guilt feeling, because they have been emotional and then they pray and they feel pressure and they say, I don't feel the presence of God. Actually, it's because they have guilt feeling, they have pressure in the heart. Instead, we will say, I'm weak, but you are strong. When I repent, you are very happy that I repent, and you will for sure forgive me and, and bless me. Then, then we have the confidence. Even when I don't feel anything, I know that God is hearing my prayer, and God is coming to me. I've heard many people, they say, oh, God is not hearing my prayer, I don't even feel His presence now. They're using the feeling to judge whether God is listening to them. So we should always use the Word of God to assure us that when we come to Him, He will always come to us. Even actually, He's always with us, in front of us and behind us, even before we pray. So that Bible verse, that here, that I, I uh, showed you earlier, that He's in front of us and He's behind us, is not... I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I went the wrong direction, I'm sorry. Okay, so um, so when we repent, 
God is very happy and even before we repent he's with us already and he's very happy with us so so we can always say God is happy with me when I trust in him now I hope this would change our life and our ministry because there are many Christians who are living under law they say oh uh, they will say to themselves I've sinned and so they dare not pray and then they would tell people <clears throat> you've sinned you have to <clears throat> you have to really repent really 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 repent before God will forgive you now that's not true we can tell people you sincerely repent you know that sins make God unhappy and sin can destroy your relationship with God and when you sincerely say Lord I offended you I'm very sorry please forgive me God is very happy so we can assure people like that whenever you repent God is very very happy and when you come close to him he is very happy for sure he'll come close to you even if you don't feel anything but when we get used to loving God when we have this uh, belief in the grace of God then even when we don't feel anything we know that he's blessing us and then the more we have faith then every time we can experience him now for myself anytime I think of God hallelujah immediately the joy will come out so because I believe that God is blessing me all the time I believe that he's with me all the time I don't doubt that at all so I hope you don't doubt that uh, and we don't say to people because you are sinning God is forsaking you God is not coming to you we should not tell people that but we should say whenever you repent God is very happy whenever you come to him he for sure will come to you and bless you so we have this confidence he will always come to us and God is happy and reward us for every little thing we do for him mark 9 41 for whoever gives you a cup of water to drink in my name because you belong to Christ surely I say to you he will by no means lose his reward so if someone gives you a cup of water because you belong to Christ so here it talks about that Jesus count as good works is what we do to Christians or what we do to non-Christians to bring them to Jesus or what we do to non-Christians to glorify God to tell them about Jesus so every good work should be connected with Jesus it's not just good works by giving money or helping the poor alone we want to tell people about Jesus and then even when we give a cup of cold water we will by no means lose the reward when we don't lose the reward that means God remembers God sees what we do and God remembers what we do and then God will reward us so that is very encouraging even a cup of cold water now Jesus did not say when you bring a person to Christ of course that will be good work it's something good very good but even when we cannot do that even when we just give a, someone a cup of water in Jesus name God is very happy so whatever we do little things we do we pray for people God is very happy happy we help people God is very happy so we want to assure ourselves anything we do for God God is very happy so this point is very important it's not hard to please God even though we're not perfect but whatever we do for him whenever we do what God tells us to do God is very happy and then when we believe that all day long we can say okay today I bless someone today I help someone thank God today I witness to someone hallelujah even though he doesn't believe but I witness to that person and God is very happy and it uh, my message might stay in the person's heart and change the person's life one day okay and then God is happy to bless us when we love him and obey him so we know that whatever little thing we do for him he's very happy to bless us Matthew 6 33 but seek first the, his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well so when we seek God's kingdom now what does seek God's kingdom mean bring more people into salvation we pray for more people to be saved and we tell them about Jesus and then the second meaning is let God be the king in our lives so seek his kingdom God's kingdom is where he rules so we want to seek God's kingdom we want God's kingdom in our hearts that means we want God to rule our heart we want God to rule our family to rule our church everywhere God is the king then we are seeking his kingdom 
and obey His commandment. Seek His righteousness means to obey His commandment. So when we want people saved and we want God to be the King of our lives and we obey Him, then all these things will be given to us. That God will give us all things. And God will give us great blessings when we love Him. 1 Corinthians 2 9, but as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. So for those who love God, God will prepare for things we have not seen, we have not heard, and our human mind has not thought of. So that's, that's wonderful when we love God, when we say, Lord, I want to be close to You. I want to obey You. I want to please You. I want to tell people about Jesus because I love you. So whatever we do to love God, I want to have the close relationship with you. Then God is very happy and God will bless us greatly that He will prepare for us things we never imagined. So that gives us great motivation to serve Him. Uh, that will tell us serving God is really, it, it will bring blessings to me. But I hope when we mature, we don't think of the blessings when we serve God. When we, you know, serve God, it's best to say, God has blessed me so much and I'm very happy to, to do things to please God. I'm very happy to love God. I'm very happy to bless other people. So the motivation is that we have the heart of God inside us, that we have this nature inside us, that we care about people and we are motivated to do anything to please God and to bless other people. And then we receive the spirit of adoption to sonship, not the spirit of slavery. Romans 8.15, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out Abba, Father. So we receive the spirit of sonship, not the spirit of bondage. We are not slaves, that we are not living in fear. But some people live in fear. They say, I'm not doing well enough, I have sinned, I, I, I have not been very faithful. Then they are living under fear and they are like a slave. But we want to be like a child, come to God, Oh, I'm a father, I love you so much, I like you, I want to be with you. Oh, I, I love to hug you, please hug me. And so we enjoy this relationship and I know that anything I do for you, you are very happy. That is motivation by the grace of God and I hope that we are all motivated by the grace of God, that we are happy to, to, uh, to uh, have a close relationship with God and love God. And we should be motivated by God's love, 2 Corinthians 5.14. For the love of Christ compels us, because we judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. So the love of Christ compels us, pushes us, motivates us. Because if one, that's Jesus, died for all, then, then we all die, that we all put down our lives and be crucified with Jesus. And He died for all that those who live should no, live no longer for themselves, but for Him who died for them and rose again, that we don't live for ourselves, but we live for Jesus Christ. So that love of God motivates us that we're willing to do anything to please God, but we're not under pressure, that we're not saying, I have not done well enough. We are motivated to do anything to please God, okay? So here are three kinds of prayer to build up the relationship with God. There are other kinds of prayer, intercession, you know, uh, declaration, uh, but here I'm not talking about those prayers. Three kinds of prayer to build up uh, the relationship with God and help us to believe in God's grace. The first kind is prayer of grace. It's, God, uh, it's declaring God, His love for us, His grace for us, His blessing for us. God is loving me. God is laying His hand upon me. God is caring for me. God is with me. So all this from the Bible, all these concepts that He is happy with me, He is blessing me, He is uh, he's bringing uh, his coming to be with me, His presence is blessing me, His anointing is upon me, and so we can pray like this, Hallelujah, thank you Lord, you're loving me right now, you're with me right now, you want to bless me, you're with me now, thank you Lord Jesus. So this is prayer of grace. It's from God to us, declaring God's grace 
from Him to us. And prayer of worship that is from us to God. Here, Lord, I love you. I worship you. I glorify you. I like you. I depend on you. I need you. So any prayer that we is from us to God. Lord, I like you. I want you. I want to be with you. I appreciate you. It's so good to be with you. So all this prayer of worship. And then God gave me this interactive prayer. Uh, whenever I love you, you are happy with me and bless me. Now, this is scriptural. That the Bible says when we love God, God is very happy and He will remember and He will bless us. And He will prepare for us things we can never imagine. So this is promised in the Bible. When we come to Him, He'll come to us. And when we seek first His kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be, will be given to us. So all these are His promises. So we can declare, when I come to you, you're very happy and you are staying with me and you're blessing me and you're giving me strength. When I come to you, oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. You never forget what I've done for you. You don't forget my heart for you. And you always come to bless me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So interactive is declaring God's response when we pray to Him. Now, many people always think of, do I get what I want when they pray? And, and then they say, a lot of times they don't get it. And so they say, God is not loving me. I want to say this, that God's love is not necessary in giving what we ask for. Sometimes what we ask for may not be the best thing for us. And also, uh, for instance, someone says, I want to have a good marriage. Please prepare for me a good wife. Now, God my first work on his life, change his life so that his life will become better before he prepares for him a good wife. So. God has His plan to, to bless us. When we follow God, all things will fall into place. As time goes on, all these blessings will come to us eventually. But they don't necessarily all come together. So some people blame God for that. But when we pray, I hope we all have this heart. Whatever God gives me is good. And He's blessing me already. He will continue to bless me. When I trust in Him and obey Him and serve Him, He's very happy and He will bless me. So I have confidence He is blessing me right now. I don't have to fear anything. And then, then we have more joy. Now these three kinds of prayer is very helpful for us to have joy. I do this every day, many times. I would say, God is loving me. Thank you, Lord. You are loving me. Hallelujah. And then when I praise God, God, you are very happy with me. And you are blessing me now. You are with me now. Hallelujah. I have all reasons to be happy. I have all reasons to enjoy you. So I hope we can all have, you know, that we can all have this relationship with God. A, a, a relationship of assurance that I'm sure that God is loving me when I trust in Him. I know for sure God is happy with me when I trust in Him and follow Him and obey Him. He's for sure happy with me. That will give us more joy instead of pressure. But many Christians live under pressure, or even pastors, they say, we have to grow, we have to make the church grow, we have to do more evangelism. That way, it's putting pressure on people instead of leading them to obey God by God's grace. So I hope you're honest or understand this and if you have a question you can send the questions to me okay now apply God's grace and law to people now this is very important how to apply it to people first you can say words of grace to people more now there is word of grace from God God loves me God cares for us God remembers us and then we can say this apply it to people too I care about you I love you so I hope we say this to people more, to, especially to our spouse and family members. I care about you. I love you. You are important to me. I appreciate you. Now, why do I put in this, put this uh, words of grace to people? So we understand when we are full of grace, we want to say words of grace to people. And then that will build our relationship. Now, why do many marriages have problems? Because they always accuse each other. They always say, you didn't do this, you didn't do that, and then it's a lot of accusation. And that way, the marriage will have problem. But instead, we should learn to say words of grace more. So not only do we have the grace of God in our heart, but we want to say words of grace to bless people. 
So you are pre- I appreciate you. Are, you are precious. You are wonderful. Thank you. You are very helpful to me. You have done this. I thank you for doing it. You are helpful. And you have done well. You are great. You have done this. So we appreciate people what you have done. You have tried very hard already. You have tried. You have tried. And I, I like that. I noticed your improvement. You have improved. Even a little improvement. We can say, I noticed your improvement. You have Im- impacted my life. You have, what you have done has great impact on my life. You have done good things in my life. You have many gifts and many strengths. And so we appreciate the strength of the person. God likes you. God will use you great. And I like you too. So we can say words of grace to people more when we apply to people. And then the next part is to motivate people to obey God's law by God's grace. So when we uh, how to motivate people to obey God by God's grace instead of saying you have to do it. So we say God is happy whenever you pray to Him. God is very happy and God has many blessings. He wants to bless you whenever you pray to Him. So motivate people to pray. Instead of saying you have to pray so long every day, you have to pray hard. We don't have to say that to people. We say God has blessings to give to you. You just pray sincerely. You trust in God. You enjoy God. God will bless you. And God always listens to your prayer. He will always listen to your prayer so, so uh, you can pray to Him and He is happy to hear your prayer. And so we can pray with confidence. We can pray with confidence that He will hear our prayer. God knows your needs before you pray. So He knows your needs. When you pray for sure, He will know, you, know your need. When you love God, He will raise you to a high level. So when you love Him, He will, he will prepare for you things that you, have ne- you can never imagine and He will raise you up to a high level. When you obey God, He will remember your good deeds and will reward you gri- richly. So when you obey Him, He will bless you richly. When you help someone, God is very happy. So whenever you do anything good, God is happy. So these are words we can say to people to motivate them to obey. Okay, and then we can guide people to change with God's grace. Now, why I, am I uh, putting this in? It's, it's saying when we live in the grace of God, we want to motivate people with grace also, with God's grace and with our grace to people, our, our acceptance of people, our love to people. So, now we will talk more about this when we do uh, teach counseling. But first here, we, we learn this. Guide people to change with God's grace. I would like to have a better relationship with you. Would you like it to? So it's guiding people. Would you like to have a better relationship? Do you think we can have a better relationship? Is it possible? Imagine how it will be when we have a better relationship. How can we have a better relationship? So how can we do it? And I like it very much when you help me. So don't remind people of their bad behavior. Don't accuse them in order to change them. Give them positive reinforcement or guide them. So instead of saying, you didn't listen to me, you didn't obey, you didn't pray, you didn't love God, instead of saying that, we say to them that whenever you do anything for God, God is very happy. And uh, when you pray to Him, He is very happy. Okay, now here are the questions. We'll pause here briefly. So is there any question here? Do you have any question uh, do you want to ask? Okay, now, um, okay, now we have, we have 25 minutes or so, so I'm going to go through these questions and we'll have a lunch break and then we'll come back. Uh, so we have 25 minutes to finish, go through this question that I just talked about. So balance of God's grace and law, the questions. What are the functions of God's law and God's grace? So what are the functions? Now here I put here, God's law tell us what to do. And God's grace tell us what God has done to bless us. So God's grace is what God does for us, His blessings to us. And God's law is what we do, that God tells us to do. And God's law tells us God's judgment and punishment. And God's grace tells us God's forgiveness and and help. Now, 
these two parts are God's law's content. First is what to do, and then, and then judgment and the punishment. And God's law motivates us by punishment and by reminding us too, reminding us and by punishment. But God's grace motivates us by grace and by love. And God's law should not be the main motivation. If not, people will be under pressure. And God's grace should be the main motivation.